Katie always has like really amazing leggings, mm -hmm. tights, leggings. You can't see my leggings, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Cynthia's channel. Hi, hello, hello. Hi, <laughs> hello, hello. Um, so today I have a special guest with me, Miss Katie. Takes up space forever on Instagram. See my shirt? Yeah, like, so cool. Katie and I always end up like having like really, really long, that's a warning chats about fat and like the society and so i wanted katie to be on this for a while but i've been slacking so that's my fault don't blame katie i've been busy too yeah yeah <laughs> katie just finished her phd no masters, masters. her <laughs> masters in social work yeah do you want to tell them about? What yeah, so about? Uh, my thesis is called um, Body Relationship and Fat Female, the Fat Female Experience. So I interviewed six people who are female identified people who also identify as fat and actually were all fat activists. Um, yeah, and it, 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 I came up with some really interesting findings that I'm going to share probably on my. Instagram page, so look out for that, I guess. Yeah, and I'll probably update the link up here too whenever that's up and ready. So, yeah, I'm so excited to have Katie on here. And today we're going to be talking really about fat activism and fat positivity. I'm always like, when I say fat positivity, because mm. I have some issues, but we're not talking about my issues today. <laughs> we're talking about Katie's amazingness. <laughs> Um, so let's start with what is fat positivity to you? Yeah, so to me, it's interesting you say that because I also have some issues with the word positive. Like you're assuming that it's going to be positive and super shiny and positive experience all yeah. the time, which is definitely not true. Like it's, it's a struggle. Um, and that's part of what I found out in my research. But I guess, like I like to think about fat acceptance or fat liberation, or even just fat activism. Um, and I guess to me, like, when it fundamentally comes down to it, it means that I don't have to hate myself for being fat. Yeah. What's your, because I've had lots of fun experiences as a fat person, just living in the world, mm -hmm. trying to be me, and really great. And by great, I mean not great experience. So, sorry, guys. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> Do you have, like, what are some experiences that have stood up to you that you're just like, this sucks? Hmm. You know, I haven't, I, I haven't had a ton of, like, direct fat phobic remarks hurled at me, or, um, I've actually, I think I've been pretty lucky, and maybe that's partially because I'm white too, like I have that privilege as well, so I walk through the world with that. But um, I think my experiences mostly revolve around um, being in medical um, systems and being, you know, prescribed weight loss and that kind of thing. And it was at a time in my life where I thought that's just what you did. You know, like it was pre... Um, fat activist Katie <laughs> yeah. and it was like oh of course I'm gonna lose weight of course yeah I'm gonna go to this you know weight loss bariatric clinic why wouldn't I because I shouldn't be this thick yeah. yeah 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 so I think that those are most of my experiences I think um we've talked about before that like I also have a hearing disability <laughs> yeah so I mean I get comments shouted from cars that I can't hear. So like maybe that's about me being fat. I don't know. Which is kind of like a good thing for me personally, but probably other people have different experiences with that. So sometimes <clears throat> I find myself trying to shrink myself a little bit and then mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck that shit. Mm -hmm. Nope. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I've had lots of experience that's why I chose the name Take Up Space because I've had tons of experiences where I've apologized for just existing. Um, like when, you know, when you 
bump into people or like you're at a really crowded party and you're trying to get through and you're like sorry sorry yeah. <laughs> sorry sorry I yeah exist. and i like put my hands up to <laughs> yeah. like make myself try and i'm just like mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah not trying to navigate through like yeah. the tiny little spaces um and it's funny because i've had people in, in those situations be like oh yeah i have a hard time getting through that too and i'm like okay it's a different experience. we're not talking about the same thing <laughs> yeah we're like you're hardly ever talking about the same thing and sometimes when i mention my fat experiences i'm just like i don't want to seem like i'm complaining too much because mm. like people will never understand mm -hmm. or haven't lived that experience so i'm just like yeah mm -hmm. which is why i love talking to you about it <laughs> yeah no and i get worried if i start talking about it to somebody who's not fat that they're gonna be like just lose weight then yeah like, what's your problem and i've gotten that or i've gotten the like oh no you're not fat you're beautiful Ugh. yes <laughs> yeah that's like, like the worst reaction i i just like you know i think there's a poem about that like the sort of like why can't i be both yeah and i remember the first time i saw that and was like holy shit like yeah. i could be both wow you know and i could be many 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 other things mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, I don't know, there's this like, for me, the fat positivity, there's a lot of like beauty, beauty, like thrown about. And I'm like, I don't want to be beautiful. Like, because beauty is also still like based on society standards. And I'm just like, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, in sort of like the fat acceptance community, there's a lot of people who play up their femininity um, and are like, you know really really femme and yeah. then that's kind of i think a way to try and be accepted yeah because if you're fat like you have to kind of make up for being fat yeah by being super femme which is something i personally like reject completely the fact that we're expected as women to look pretty and then by looking pretty we gain status mm -hmm. you know like it's it, but if we're able to kind of tear down all of those as assumptions and stereotypes around what it is to be a woman, then we can go and wear makeup because we want to. Yeah. And I absolutely respect that, and people do that. Um, but there is like an overrepresentation of fat people being really feminine, whatever or, that means. And sexy, yeah. 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 Right. And that like brings me to like I've been thinking about how like. You can't have feminism without fat acceptance and liberation because mm. like fat women are underrepresented when we talk about feminism mm -hmm. and fat issues are not really addressed mm -hmm. and yeah i was going to ask do you think like fat liberation is like and the whole movement as a whole is like a human rights issue absolutely yeah it, 100 percent yeah full we're stop to end the interview now <laughs> this is the end of this goodbye that's all you need that's all you need um no like that that's the thing i think is that people think it's about what you look like but it's actually about the fact that fat people don't get the same equal access to resources they don't get the same medical treatment they get stereotyped and discriminated against in all kinds of areas um, like sure. educational like parents who are fat like children who are fat right like so it's not about like oh i want some dude to find me sexy which like that's what they think and you're like no no, <laughs> no. it's Bye. it's about like i need i need the equal access to resources so i can like live my best life yeah when i talk about like mental health and people are like oh yeah just go see a therapist i'm like for me it, access to a therapist is harder because like just even like going into the doctor's office to ask for like a referral it's like it usually like ends with like a weight talk like you need to lose weight and then mm -hmm. i'm just like can't deal with this yeah yeah no, or it's just like thrown in there at the end, like you're leaving and they're like, oh, by the way, you you need to lose weight. Have you checked your weight lately? <laughs> yeah. And yes. I see myself in the mirror every day. Right, exactly. Like we know. Um, 
thanks. Yeah. Also, like, fat doesn't necessarily equal unhealthy. So, and I think, like, that's the thing is that people get afraid to go to the doctor because they're going to bump up against all this fat phobia, which is ultimately, you think, going to do your mental health even worse than you were in the first place. True. So it's like, let's just not go. And then a lot of people don't go to the doctor for a really long period of time. Um, don't, maybe they have physical health issues that don't get addressed because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, or um, there's a Ellen Maude Bennett obituary that you probably yes. heard of recently, right? Where, where, you know, she was trying to get treatment. Mm-hmm. And they were just like, you're fat, lose weight. And she's like, no, actually, it ultimately was she had cancer. Yeah. And died. Yeah. So this, this is real. People are dying. The way you looked at yourself, has it changed since you embraced fat activism and fat liberation? Yes, it has, definitely. Um, I say this with an amount of hesitation because I don't want to say that you know, every day I get up and I'm like, my body is amazing. My body Everything's is a wonder perfect. Um, you know, sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns all the time. Yeah. No. <laughs> it doesn't it's work like that. It's never like that. No, no. No. So, but, but I think I've, you know, gained an appreciation for my body. And, like, that has come through fat activism and through other experiences that I've had where... You know, I just come to a place of, like, this is, like, actually a miracle that I exist in this body. That I would not be who I am if I wasn't actually in this particular body. And, like, you know, come to a place where I'm like, I'm pretty cool, so that would be a shame. You are pretty cool. (laughs) She is pretty cool. Like, seriously. It feels weird to say that. But, yeah. Um, But, yeah, it's, like, and it's also, I think from seeing other people engage with their bodies and like feel good in their bodies Mm -hmm. that has allowed me to be like oh okay like if that person who looks like me can feel that way then I can too like giving that permission to myself yeah I think like representation is so important so important like the thing so important (laughs) if you have the platform like represent a way there's like, if you think, like, oh, I'm alone in whatever you're dealing with, there's probably, like, so many other people who kind of relate. Maybe not totally, but, yeah. And, yeah, it's so big. Mm-hmm. So big. That was, like, I mean, I'll tell a little story. Is like, one of my first um, kind of peaks, a little peak at um, fat activism was on Tumblr in 2011. I found a Tumblr called Chubby Bunnies, and it was, have you heard of it? Yeah. yeah. So it's like a, a Tumblr is just photos of people submitting photos of themselves, and they're bigger women, usually. Um, and I saw this body that looked like mine, um, like that had like the similar stomachs and like looked like my body kind of, and, and it was naked. And people were like, you look amazing, like, you're so hot, like, you look great, you're so whatever, like, all this yeah. stuff, and I was like, what? Like, yeah, people, like, that exists? Like, people are praising this person, and they're not telling them to lose weight, and they're just being like, you're awesome, and so that, like, that was, like, representation for me being like, holy shit, like, I could do that, maybe, at some yeah. point, or feel that way about my own body. Do you think that fat activism is important for our current society? And if you do, why? Um, yeah, like, we've already kind of talked about it, but I think it's this idea of, of recognizing that, the, like, being fat in this society does actually put you at a disadvantage. Yeah. Um, like I think that's not actually recognized. Um, and people blame fat people for their, for being fat. (laughs) And so that's like, it's, 
I mean, there is a debate in the more more of the literature around like, well, like is is fat your fault, and is that even like is that a valid kind of concern? Even it's like I yeah. personally think that like it doesn't matter who's at fault or whatever. It's still you're not getting access to the things you yeah. need access to. Yeah. Um. So. I think that it's important because. Like, one, we're not recognizing that it's important. And two, that people are not getting access to the things they need access to because of their body size. Yeah. And, like, body size is not in any, as far as I know, at least in Canada, is not in any human rights. Like, it's not a protected um, tenant. Status? Or, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not in any human rights codes. Yeah, um, and there's actually a really pr the most prominent movement I've seen is in actually Manitoba right now to get it added to the Manitoba's human rights code or whatever it's called. That's pretty cool. Ontario, yeah. get on that. Yeah, Ontario is trying, but there, it's just not as big as. Yeah, for some reason Manitoba's like got this. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> Manitoba. What are you doing? Give us tips. What yeah, are some things that helped you get to this place of fat liberation, like when you were starting out? Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely, representation was the first thing that helped me find people that are fat on social media and there's so many of them now like back in 2011 there wasn't as many um but now they're kind of everywhere maybe it's just because my feeds are just filled with them. yeah because like <laughs> curate your feeds yes like, seriously like, exactly anyone who says anything fat phobic or shames anyone i'm just like unfollow i yeah. don't care if we've been friends for 25 years goodbye um, so they say that it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert at something. So I think about that a lot when I'm looking at social media, because I do it a lot. Um, <laughs> what are you looking at? Like, what are you becoming an expert in? Mm, true. So it's really important to, to, you know, follow a very diverse representation of bodies. And when I say that, I mean, like, I've actually stopped following as many white people because there's tons of them. Also, I'm white. That's my experience. I, I know that experience. Yeah. So like, you know, following people of color, following people with different kinds of disabilities, following people with different kinds of chronic illnesses, um, following a variety of genders, mm -hmm. um, just follow people who have like different kinds of skin pigmentations or like people that have lots of stretch marks or acne or like just things that are not traditionally beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Or accept, traditionally accepted. Yeah, because all of those, like the, the thin, white, able-bodied, clear skin, like we got that. Like we have that in our brains. Yeah. From TV and movies and ads and all of those things. We got that. We need like all of the other kinds of things so we can think... This is all a part of the spectrum of humanity. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like the more we as consumers of media look at these people, the more creators of media would be like, oh, people are interested in these diverse communities. Let's tap into that. So it's capitalist, but it works. That's the system we're in. I mean, you have to like work with the system you're in. Sometimes, and, yeah, yeah. Give them a reason to buy into. So, like, if your friends are doing anything, support them, like promote them. Even if it's not your friend, but you're like, this person's cool. I've never seen someone like this before. Support, promote, mm -hmm. shout out, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> so we have representation and curating your social media. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other tips for people who want to start to accept their body more or even be promote <clears throat> fat and body inclusion? Um, I think that having... I have two other things I was thinking of. One is having that critical understanding of that the world does discriminate 
and to consistently kind of see that in what's happening in your life um, on in media, I think that's really important so that you're you're kind of looking at everything with a critical lens now. Like it's like you get you kind of like flick a switch and now you're like this is problematic and this is problematic and this is problematic. <laughs> you know, like I think that's really important to keep, don't just like I don't, this is my suggestion. It's like don't just just like sit in front of your computer and do it, but talk about it with your friends. Like you might develop into fights. Yes. Um, it is a problem. <laughs> yeah, I've I've lost a few friends recently. It happens. Right, like, sometimes that does happen when you can't bring someone over to your side, and that's the thing, like, you can't change what people think, you can only present what is there, yeah. and then they need to make their own decision. But, uh, I've found in finding other folks to talk to you about fat activism, it's solidified itself in my brain. So when I wake up, and if I have that moment where I'm like, I really hate my stomach today, I can be like, okay, what's going on? Like, why am I thinking that? And then start like really being critical. I swear you read my blog and I haven't <laughs> published it yet. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> no, like, almost everything you said, I'm like, I just wrote that in the blog post. <laughs> It's like great minds, right? <laughs> yeah, that's so important too, right? Because when you lose friends, you gain like a lot of friends too. I feel like the stronger you are in your convictions and the better you know yourself, the better friends you accumulate and you yeah. surround yourself with. Yeah. Right, like the they're your people. Like they they'll get what you mean. Like. I can't tell you how amazing it is to sit in a space with somebody and not have to explain what I'm talking about. Like, you just get it. Yeah. Well, it's also, like, super exhausting to constantly have to explain yourself to Yeah, people. or even thinking about explaining yourself. I'm just... There's some days where I'm like, oh, I'm not... I'm not going to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the other, another thing, right? It's like picking and choosing when am I going to expend this mental energy, emotional energy, and when am I not? And I think, excuse me, when you're really angry, yeah, <laughs> like you tend to just... And that happens a lot when you're a fat activist. I was just talking to somebody the other day though about anger. And anger is a super important emotion to sort of like kickstart whatever you're you know, whatever injustice you're fighting to kickstart that activism around it. But I think there's a time when you can be so angry that people won't listen. They're automatically like going to put their defenses yeah. up. So I think that's also important in fat activism to realize that people are so entrenched in diet culture and fat phobia and their, their identities depend on it. Like people depend on the fact that they're trying to lose weight and then once they lose weight they're going to be a better person, successful, have more status, have the perfect relationship, whatever. Accepted. Right. Loved. Yeah. All of those things. And so like obviously they're gonna get angry when you start you start trying to dismantle mm -hmm. their belief system. Yeah. Um so I think that's important to remember when you're getting angry <laughs> is that like this is where this person's co coming from and mm -hmm. because the culture has encouraged it obviously they're gonna yeah. do that so i think it's to come from a place of compassion yeah. is really important i find now there was a time i was like so angry at people and now i'm just angry at society not like <laughs> yeah but just the construct was built around bodies or what the concept the structure yes that's the word we've built around like body acceptance mm -hmm. it has just makes me so angry and now when people say like fat phobic stuff i just feel like sorry for them mm -hmm. yeah it's like and sometimes i'm like some people are so bad though that i'm like i can't feel sorry for you like, yeah, I'm just like, you're the worst. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I'm trying to be kinder, and it's so hard. 
It's really hard. It's hard to be kind. Because you're being hurt. Like, when somebody says something fat phobic, it's hurting you. Yeah. So to respond to that with kindness is really difficult. Yeah, and I feel like, I don't know, people just... I don't know if this is something people think actively, but, like, through, like, media representation of fatness, I feel like people believe that fat people just have, like, words bounce off of us. Mm -hmm. And we don't feel any pain, and like, because every fat person is like the deep sea person, or like the super strong mother or figure. Mm -hmm. or if it's a guy, it's like the funny, undateable person. Mm -hmm. For the women, too, it's still undateable, but it's like you're always happy, and mm -hmm. you always know, like, you're fat, you're like automatically like mom. Mm -hmm. You're like jolly. Yeah, I think you like, jolly. like Santa. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's all we get. So it's very weird, and I don't know why this is blurry, and... No, it is blurry. It is very blurry. Why? Excuse me. Oh, okay. Things happened. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, We're yeah. just in it. <laughs> We're out of focus, yeah. But yeah, so it's very... Fatness is a very... Like, I could talk about fatness forever, and I want to. I just want to keep talking about like the fat experience because it's interesting. Like we've just done like a summary of what the fat experience is. I wish I could take you guys into a doctor's appointment. Oh my god, you could do like an undercover. An undercover. Ugh. I'm still like I finally just got a referral to a family doctor. Finally, after wow. like looking for a year. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's great. Hopefully they're not fat phobic. Yeah. I think what's interesting about like having accepted fat as a legitimate experience in the world and not trying to change my body anymore is that I have this problem where I'll see other fat people on the street. Even I'll be like, damn, nice. Like, you're looking good. <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> I want to compliment every fat person because I know we don't get compliments a lot. But I'm like, I don't want to put you on the spot too. And then you seem like a big creep. Yeah. <laughs> like, I had someone ask me once if I was a lesbian because I was giving so many women compliments. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> But no, they're just hot. They're hot <laughs> and they look good and yes. That is good for that. Did you join the fat is not a violation thing? No. Okay. Um I'm still I'm still figuring out like how much of my body I want to show on yeah. online. Um Like see that's what I mean. Like I, I'm in a fat acceptance space, but it's it's still hard. Yeah. Like, it, and I've had some horrible comments on things, and, you know, I just, my um, approach to that is just to delete them. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't engage at all. Some of my followers actually are engaging with one person. I'm like, thank you, but I'm just going to delete it. Thanks, <laughs> um, for, it. thanks for sticking out for me. Like, um, yeah, so I still have a lot of stuff around being naked yeah and i think that's like yeah your choice just because you're unclothed doesn't mean it's like more of a statement yeah 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 but like yeah i feel like for people to take you to accept not for fat people but for other people to accept that you're comfortable like you have to push the boundary somehow mm -hmm. You have to be like extra naked or extra sexy or extra happy just to show that like, yeah, I like my body. Mm -hmm. And I don't always like my body, so take that. No one always likes their body because we live in a society where like you're constantly here. Your body's not good enough. Mm -hmm. So like there will be moments of like, I feel like of doubt or of like dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've gotten to a pl place where there's no like intense dislike for anything but yeah like being in nigeria was like hard on my fat acceptance <laughs> but yeah well and that kind of to me shows how um how much of an impact it does have to be around people who understand mm -hmm. it because yeah when you go when you went to nigeria and you're like surrounded by fat phobic 
people, people, <laughs> people of yeah. the flat folk nature. <laughs> yeah. People who hate fat people. Mm, yikes. And so it's much harder to be like, yeah. accept, accepting of your fat body because like, obviously it would be. Yeah. And that's kind of where people live generally, right? Like in, in culture, having all of those messaging. All of those messages. Yeah. Um, and I, I do want to say too, like that um, fat phobia like impacts thin people too. It's yeah. it's not it's not like any any kind of oppression doesn't just impact the group that's being oppressed. oppressed. Yeah. And so with thin people, you know, they're they're expected to constantly work on the fact that they're thin and constantly and trying to maintain it. Yeah, maintain it, be trying to lose weight, like doing all the juice cleanses, whatever, right? And like for that's damaging to thin people's mental health as well. It's not just a fat people issue, yeah. Which I think is something that isn't talked about enough. Yeah, and I feel like fat phobia has a lot to do with eating disorders, mm -hmm. which is another talk for another day. But it does, because like. There's this fear of, yeah, not being enough, <clears throat> and enough for society is like a certain body image and mm -hmm. self image. Yeah, it's very, very interesting fatness. Yeah, interesting. yeah, I feel like we totally could do like another talk on. How, I would love that. How does eating disorders and fat phobia intersect? Yeah, because that's something I'm so interested in because of our work with Body Brave. And yes. Um, I want to, and it's not talked about enough in eating disorder spaces, so if we like start talking about this, maybe it's kind of a new thing where people will, will be like, oh, yeah, like, that's interesting, let's, let's like investigate it more. So. Investigate with Cynthia, no, investigate with Katie and <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> Investigation, we could have like a magnifying glass and be like. <laughs> I'm going to like get an emoji and just put it right there. Okay, so we're coming to a close. Um, this is going, like I mentioned in the beginning, this is a really long one. And I hope you guys stay for the whole thing because it's been really interesting. Really, really interesting and hopefully educational for some people. And hopefully it will help some people accept their bodies more. You don't have to get to like love today. Love is like a very complex thing. So mm -hmm. take your time, but accept your body, and like start with maybe one part of your body. If you want to start with your left eye, that's a good place to start. Just start with one part, and then work your way through from head to toe. Um, last thing. So Katie is like one of my go-to people for like resources on fat activism mm -hmm. so can you share with us some of your favorites yeah for sure um that's so funny i was making a resource page today like my probably in terms of websites just in, in in body liberation in general not just fat activism but the body is not an apology.com is like one of the best websites i've ever found it's She's super amazing. intersectional um, all kinds of different writers that come from all kinds of backgrounds and um, the book The Body is Not an Apology is amazing too. Sonia Renee Taylor. Right? That's right, yeah. Um, fat activist wise, like I kind of first discovered Virgie Tovar um, and Jess Baker around the same time. Yeah. And they're both amazing. Um, Virgie Tovar is just put out a new book called You Have the Right to Remain Fat, which is awesome. Did you, did you read it yet? I'm like halfway through it. <gasps> and it's so far, it's it's so great. Um, and it's really short too, so it's really accessible. I need to read it. I'll lend it to you. Thank yeah. you. Um, and yeah, those are, oh, um, Dances with Fat is Reagan Chastain's blog. She's really cool because she is a, a fat athlete and dancer oh, cool. and just like kills it on her blog. Like she's amazing at like deconstructing what's going on in society and she's always got 
pretty short blog posts that are talking about like really current things that are mm-hmm. happening. Um, she gets a lot of hate. There's like a whole Reddit dedicated to how horrible she is. It's okay, so assignment <laughs> for that for everyone. Please go check her out and then like just like flood her with love. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. people are brutal and we need like support in these spaces because it's such a hard thing to do. Thank you mm-hmm. for coming up on Broke That End with Cynthia. Thanks for having me. Um, so thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to follow Katie's Instagram, Take Up Space Forever. Um, follow my Instagram as well. It's Cynthia underscore Broke Fat. And subscribe, like, comment. Let's know. We want to hear about your own experiences in your bodies, whatever your body looks like. We're accepted of everyone. And what do you think we can do to make the world more body inclusive? Want to hear back from you. And also let us know what are some topics you'd like us to talk about in the future. Okay, thanks for watching. Peace out. Bye.